So welcome back to the part 2 of Divine Masculine's Loving Confession to Divine Feminine channeling session. In the last, in the part 1, in fact, I told you guys that certain words were sent to me in another language. It's a language that I know but I don't speak it every day. And neither I'm extremely professional at it. I just know the language, that's it. I can understand I can say a few things. So it was very intriguing. And probably this is the second time. Second time, yeah, when I got the channeling in another language. And there's more coming, of course, uh, which I would be doing tomorrow now. So to continue from where I ended, I was also shown a mirror selfie. That's why in the thumbnail picture, I have used the mirror selfie of a couple. I was shown that one of the couples, some of the couples, maybe they took those pictures in front of the mirror. And for some people, it was like they really admired their DMs or their DFs mirror selfies. And they talked about it and they discussed about it. These are just very small things, but it was shown to me in the channeling. I don't know how many will resonate with it and how many won't, but my work here is to relay the messages so and then uh, this word mirror being used by the divine masculine collective is rare because they a lot of them actually don't know the concept of twin flames or even if the divine feminines have shared it with them or talked about it some of them have must have used the word here and there but this word in itself is so deep that you actually learn the real meaning of it when you are in the long-term separation. Most of you will agree with that. And obviously, everyone cannot agree with everything, so that's understandable. Now, how this uh, scenario over here, this mirror scenario will change uh, is when the chaser stops the chasing, and that is the reason why separation phase is very, very important. So that the chaser leaves the runner alone. And the runner can then face his or her demons all by themselves without taking help from other people. They obviously took help when it came to the Divine Feminine, when it came to decision making. They asked other people around... They asked probably the family or the friends or anybody for that matter. And obviously that led to them not choosing the divine feminine and going by other people's judgment or opinions or even their own, you know, their, everyone has their own life experience. So they spoke from that. And plus the divine masculine himself wasn't so sure. So when you're not sure about something and you go and ask other people for advice, it's not necessary you're not lucky enough to meet the right type of people. And that too, when you're unhealed, you can imagine. When you're in the process of healing, then you will attract the right information or you will attract people who uplift your spirits or motivate you in some way or confidence is given to you. Or even when they give you advice, they are stern in a way that it really helps you. Like, yeah, man, someone was so stern with me or so... Uh, you know serious or disciplined it helped me out all of that doesn't happen unfortunately before the separation phase I think it you know in the case of divine feminine we can still say that she is you know more lucky than him because she is getting a lot of wisdom a lot of help and again that is because she believes in the supernatural realm and she believes in the angels she believes in the universal domain. She believes in the source. She probably believes, some of them believes in the reincarnation story. They believe in the theory that we have many lives and we have many births and we are coming here and going here again and again. And we don't have to do that all the time just to understand a simple thing called love. So all of those things happened with her. But for the divine masculine specifically, he had to learn it like this only. He had to, you know, do the practical, take the practical crash course and actually literally crash. But that will not happen until unless he's alone. So the divine feminines have to leave him alone so that 
the runner can face all of his fears <clears throat> and without taking anyone's help and then awaken fully and in the meantime like what how does it work he gives you the silent treatment when he gives you the silent treatment it really hurts your self esteem and self respect but then you are all by yourself and when you are all by yourself and you are figuring it out that why he did this to me why he did that to me and that's when you start doing more deeper form of inner work deeper form of research deeper form of listening happens because you've been given the silent treatment you're in the solitude zone so you listen you enjoy the sound of the silence and that's when you understand that your biggest childhood trauma was actually abandonment or ignoring you or saying mean things to you or even physical abuse or bullying or sexual abuse or sexual trauma or trauma or the narcissistic template you know all of these things you figure out and there are so many other terminologies you probably could be an empath or you could be having some kind of a uh, psychosomatic uh, stress or it could be coming from your past life or it could be due to ancestry it could be due to your ancestors are unhappy with you you need to you know do something about it so many things but again they are not like so many things don't get scared <clears throat> so the reason why you are a mirror is because both of you have to do one thing and that is let go one has to let go their ego you know and follow the feelings and the emotions the true feelings and the other has to also let go let go of the fact that she is in the doer and let the doer do everything and you just be the medium and you just basically integrate with the source and now it's you know when those childhood wounds were in and all the pain because see what you're experiencing right now in the separation is painful but what you experienced during the childhood during the adolescence was far more painful so much pain you witnessed you know my heart goes out for all of you people honestly so all of those negative feelings that pain that abandonment is still there <clears throat> that fear of abandonment so when you are in the separation phase you go like yeah i mean it's okay the worst has already happened now the w- the one person i should not abandon in this crisis situation is me so the divine feminine also learns to live for herself and he learns to live for her you know he is constantly continuously living for himself all the time all he had a great life let me tell you he had a good fun time Yes he also had childhood traumas he also had you know bad situations crises but he also had you know one thing he was higher in the department is he really would take care of himself he would do things for himself he would go out he would do those things you know that's why they have that those brownie points which some of the divine feminines they receive when they are in the separation phases and there are different separation phases so in the separation phases some of the divine feminines also meet their karmics you know this is how it works but both of the people even in the case when she is having a good time with the karmic she knows that the karmic is not really a lover lover a true lover he is there just because she is attractive or he wants to have a good time but you know the karmics also know that the divine feminine is not serious for him like not really serious for him slowly and gradually these things come to surface you know initially slowly and gradually i don't mean like 10 years for some people it can be 10 years also because what if the divine feminine gets married to a karmic and it goes on for a long time and then she realizes that no 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 he is not the one he was never the one he was probably there to wake me up and tell me that my lover is that guy you know the one who made me so angry so uh, much rejection he gave me so much abandonment he gave me that i didn't even want to see his face but now after all the realization so this is not just for people who are who are away for 10 years this is can be for anyone literally so this this whole 
understanding that the divine feminine learns from the from her karmic situations is that no and again karmic relationships and false twin relationships can also happen before you meet the dm later on after you separate or during separation if any karmic comes to your life then also it would be more like you could probably be just talking to them you could probably just be hanging out with them you know that there is some romantic angle is there but you it's not there from your side but then still it will somehow you know make you feel very strongly that this is not what i want to do i have no interest in this yes i can meet people as good friends i can talk to people as good friends because i like talking to people i like interacting with interesting people but now you won't see them as a man or a woman that gender consciousness would also go away you will only love them like them talk to them because you like something about their soul you know but from that particular angle that i have a life partner or a man or a woman in my life or if you are in the same sex that i have a life partner and that one person who is my mirror is my twin and then again there are different types of unions also different types of unions and i keep making videos on these things maybe you've not seen all of them but this is one point that i would in coming time i would be uh, projecting more on these because i know that there are different types of twin flame formats and there are different types of unions also don't be you know stuck up because you are not having a typical conventional union i will tell you that because okay i'll tell you one more example which is a real life example um there is this person i know she basically was dating someone couple of years ago maybe 10 odd years back and i have actually been seeing her journey like her journey because she shares a lot on social media and she can she inspires people just by living her life so she doesn't uh, do much but she shares about everything that she's doing so she was dating someone she really liked someone and this guy was a musician not a very conventional type of a person very different you know if you're different you're different you have to accept that but 10 years back she was so conventional and so orthodox or in her uh, mind or in her formats or ways of living that she did not think that this person would be a suitable partner for her that she could live her life with him or she could do certain things in a certain way with him and cut to 10 years later they meet at again some party some place and 10 years have gone by and she has figured it out somehow that you no know, i met so many of these people but none of them were so intense or the connection was not like how i had with him and after that she meets him and they literally have a baby together because i've been watching their journey for a very long time so obviously i've been i saw when she was alone i saw her when i used to talk say hi and and all of this happened after the spiritual ascension when she actually took it very seriously the inner work everything she worked on her trauma she healed herself and then this man out from out of the blue came back in her life she just met him but the connection was so strong it was always strong but at back back then it didn't appear to be feasible and you know they had a baby but they still did not get married they, they didn't even get engaged they didn't even get engaged because it's all happening in a unconventional way and now she is grown so much as a person that she doesn't care and there are no people to criticize her for what she did in fact it's like people just love everything that she's sharing about their relationship about the pregnancy then about the child about the child growing up you know everything is so beautiful and it's not even conventional because commitment is not something that you do only when you walk down the aisle or you you know take seven rounds around the fire though i really find all of those things also very beautiful completely beautiful very loving very caring approaches but then this point is also true that the commitment is in your heart it's in your mind it's in your soul it's the same kind of commitment that radha and krishna had 
despite not being physically together they were so together that people pray them together even if radha got married to someone else and krishna got married to someone else but their love is so true so genuine that people gave them that label of true lovers they didn't even have to do it and as i said there are many stories of radha and krishna very divine mystical stories that if one would go to visit radha they would see krishna sitting next to her and people found it like beyond their you know like they could not even imagine it or when they saw it for real they were like oh my god they are one and this is the same type of commitment that shri ram and sita had even when sita was exiled and even when she was away from shri ram not even one day went by that they would not think of one another lovingly with respect they would not say anything bad about one another and then i told you in one of the channelings that sita actually astrally projected to see him and he got a golden idol made of her but he did not remarry anyone he did not allow that he was like no she is the only person i love and she is my wife exile or no exile she is my wife and i will continuously love her for the rest of my life and even beyond that is that is the type of commitment that even if the person is not next to you you are still committed to them fully and that is why the love is so strong and that is why it's alive and this is the same commitment that shiva had when sati perished into fire when she died when she passed over even when she was not there he can't, he kept on saying that she is my wife she is the love of my life so much so that sati was eventually reborn and he did deep penance for that deep meditation deep inner work shiva did all of that and even when they were separated because of life and death the commitment never went and when parvati was reborn and she went to him he said no my wife is sati i am not going to accept you and then it was her turn because he rejected her see it is completely this is all twin flame stories real genuine twin flame stories from the land of india the subcontinent of india which is a nepal is a part of it i would say sita was born in nepal and shiva lived in nepal for many years and especially during the time when he was alone he used to live with only animals and that's why he was called pashupati nath <clears throat> so i am bringing these stories to you so that you know that so that you understand that you're not alone in this journey shiva has walked on this path ram has pa- walked on this path krishna has walked on this path this is a path of love this is not the path of typical love that you see but it's a part of true path of true love actual love divine love twin flame love twin flame ascension it's like people would see that love in the eyes of divine masculine and divine feminine but he was scared of this love so he ran away he was so scared of because he'd never experienced this type of love never experienced that type of intensity and she had never seen someone running away like that because see divine feminines have also been in relationships okay before meeting the divine masculine in fact this is also a pattern that is being noticed by people all over the world who are in this dynamic that the divine feminines have been in long term relationships and the masculines have been in mostly flings so when they run away when they when they separate it has been observed now it doesn't happen with everyone is the divine feminine this time who tries out on flings or karmics or you know like small relationships which then she feels that no 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 it's not going to work out there's a phase for that for some of them and he is the one who gets into a serious relationship with a karmic or with a false twin or whosoever and then he realizes that oh my god <laughs> this is crazy and she realizes oh my god this is crazy now i understand how it feels to be in flings and all these short term relationships that end so fast they end faster than how they started like oh my god like initially it looked like so nice and after just two weeks or three weeks it's like she doesn't want to see the face of the same guy so these things can happen even when you are having like a online affair or a fling or just hanging out with someone but you do learn the lesson and all these scenarios were shown to me during the channeling that's why 
you know you you must have noticed that i was about to end the channeling right after 11 15 minutes or something and then it does it just didn't stop and it's still going on so the idea is to let you know this is what i'm i've been made to relay spontaneously actually that he has figured out that your role in his life is so important because you are actually showing him the places where he needs to do the work to become a better man to become a better partner to become the better person that's why i gave the example of this girl this couple who were in separation for so many years and and now it's not like he is he has not done his part he is also having a child with her and she is also understanding that you don't need to get married married to have a child with someone or to live with someone or to love someone so on that note i'm going to be ending this channeling session thank you so much for being here and uh, thank you so much for doing all the inner work because all this inner work really helps mother earth and she feels healed she feels healed so many people feel healed and she is ascending so many others will ascend so one love and peace out